Hey everybody, Wayne here. Today I'm going to do a tutorial and review of the game 21, which refers to Type 21, the Naval Wonder Weapon 1943 to 1945. Um, this refers to the Type 21 U-boat submarine that Germany was developing and producing near the very end of World War II. Uh, this game is designed by Stephen Cunliffe, and it, it's a solitaire game, obviously, um, published by LPS and in against excuse me, in Against the Odds magazine, specifically the annual 2018 Sea Monsters issue. Now, it says 2018, but actually, I just put up a recon video recently. It's not actually 2018, it's being released right now in 20, the end of 2020 here. So, this is a brand new um, release with four new games in it. So, you get a quad, you get all four games uh, with just this one magazine, which is really nice. Two of them are solitaire designed. Um... Those are the two that I'm likely going to look at. Um, first one, as I just said, is the Type 21 here. So uh, what's unique about this one... Oh, and before I dive in, a couple things. Um, I just want to say thank you, first of all, to uh, Steven for, over at um, LPS for sending me a review copy here to look at, to show off to you guys, so you guys can see what, what all these games are about, and you guys know whether you should probably check out the magazine or not. And here's a hint. So far, I'm thinking you should probably check it out. Um, secondly, I want to thank all my viewers, supporters. I've had more people donating than ever, more people, um, subscribers than ever, commenting, sending me messages. I appreciate all of you so much. Uh, I'm not going to call it names specifically, but there's a lot, I have a lot of good viewers who comment, post, you know, all those good things, and I sure appreciate it. So, um, every subscriber helps me to get more games to show off to you guys and all that good stuff, all right? So, enough with that. Let's go ahead and dive in. Um, What's really interesting about this game, and I, I kind of have it set up and I have a couple turns in now. Um, then what I'm going to do is after I do my overview here, you know, I'll play through a couple turns, kind of do the actual tutorial or the primary, you know, like playthrough tutorial. And then I'll end everything with my final thoughts, my review. So um, start off here, partially set up. What's really interesting about this game and what caught my eye even before I got a chance to play it was the fact that this isn't just and don't get me wrong i love the games but this isn't just a you know hey you captain a u-boat you go out in the atlantic and you try to sink merchant ships and try not to get sunk yourself um a la hunters hunted uh u-boat uh, leader etc and many more right good games great games in fact great solitaire games uh, narrative driven solitaire games this one is different yeah there is an aspect of combat and that's down here at the bottom of the board um, of you actually sending out trying to sink some convoys. But in reality, what the game is about is about you trying to build that Type 21, right? The wonder weapon. The one that they thought, oh, hey, maybe this will change the course of the war. This is good. This is going to be the one weapon that does it for us. Clearly, historically, you know, it wasn't going to. But at the same time, very powerful, um, very advanced for the time. And that's represented in this game. So in this game, Solitaire game, you are playing, um, I can't remember exactly who you're supposed to represent, but basically you are building, you're constructing the actual, or trying to construct, I should say, the Type 21 U-boat in the different shipyards and putting them to sea. And then you're able to actually use them as they, and they get better and better stats over time to go ahead and sink the different convoys. So your turn is going to look something like drawing random chits from a cup. You're going to have them in this uh, counter allocation box. You're going to play them depending on where they go. The game's going to tell you exactly where each of them goes. And then from there, you're going to start making some rolls. You're going to start do, dealing with maybe bombings. You're going to start moving your pieces around. And this is when it really is kind of the, the interesting part of the game is where you're actually moving the sections. So there's, there's hull sections. There's crew. There's internal systems. So you can see here, um, you have, you know, the different... Like I said, internal systems, train crews, hull sections, and you're actually moving them around, moving them to the shipyards. There's Danzig, Hamburg, and Bremen. You're moving to those shipyards, and you're trying to get the right pieces to construct the U-boats. As that's happening, there's going to be bombs dropped. Apologies if you hear my dog barking in the background. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take care of my dog. All right. Sorry for that quick little break while I had to take care of my dogs. If you have dogs, you know how it is. Saw a mail truck or garbage man or random person walking by the house and decided to uh, 
let them know uh, they're not welcome. So, all right, back to the game. Where was I? Um, so, it's talking about the game, getting set up. So, you're moving these pieces, right? So, talk about the different pieces, uh, you know, hull sections, internal systems, train crews. And you're moving them around. Um, and the game has a different different sections. And we'll, we'll kind of dig into it more as I play through a couple turns. But it has this model development track. And on it, it's going to have, you start at the bottom. You're starting off with some Type 7s. And you can see I have one right here. A actual, so this is the standard Type 7 that, um, you know, produced a ton of, Journey produced a ton of them during World War II. You're going to start off with a couple of those. Um, and then you're able to send them. Well, their stats... Their stats stink, frankly, at least compared to the Type 21, especially as it gets developed. As you build the Type 21, so you get the correct amount of pieces, and the pieces, not only is it divided by, obviously, hull section, train crew, and internal system, but if you look, it may be hard to see, but that's okay. You get the idea here, is that there's actually symbols, um, square, circle, um, triangle, and or excuse me, diamond, I don't want to call it triangle, a diamond, so square, circle, diamond, and those different symbols are represented on the board here, maybe hard to see, but they're represented here, so for instance, the first time you build a type 21A, it's going to be two square, two diamond, two circles, now yes, that's going to end up being generally two internal systems, two hull sections, two train crews, but what's interesting is as time goes by, because every time you build one, you get to put a marker here, they get more advanced, and it requires actually less resources to build, less varied resources and less resources, and their stats get better. Their defense goes up, their rating for their engine, their silence rating, and their attack rating all go up. Um, so it's kind of a snowball effect. The more you build, the better they get, um, and the cheaper they are, right? Kind of economies of scale type of deal. So you're moving your pieces. Um, I think I mentioned bombing attacks before my dog started bark barking, so dog attack apparently. Um, there's going to be bombing attacks. They're going to shut down areas. You can spend your resources. These are the resources to repair the bombings. Um, you can use, you have IGB command markers that are going to dictate, uh, you're going to need those available in your counter allocation box to build boats to the flotillas, I should say, because each one of these, you know, represents a flotilla. It's not just one boat. It's a whole flotilla of them. Um, and to build them and to repair bomb damage, um, Etc. Etc. So, um, yeah. And while this is happening, I just want to cover this quick before we dive into the actual playthrough. While this is happening, you're going to be drawing. You're going to end up drawing a couple different Allied units. Now, there's going to be convoys, which you can see a convoy here in the Atlantic Ocean, one in the Western approaches. Those convoys will appear. They'll get placed in the Atlantic Ocean. Eventually, going to move to the Western approaches, and you're going to send you submarines out. You're trying to sink them. Um, if you sink them, you can. They go to the scrap pile. Over here, and you're able to put them on the turn track because as time goes by, you're actually placing counters on the turn track, and you want to hopefully have their counters available, the allied counters available to place there. Otherwise, you end up putting your own counters there, which then later on, you're not going to get them back when you go ahead and do this, or it's going to take a while um, anyway. So, as well, that's part of the victory conditions, right? So, part of the victory conditions, a big part, not only are building enough of the Type 21 submarines, but also sinking convoys because that's you know a key part of the war effort right for the germans was hey let's try to sink these convoys so that you have a chance against the allies um you know stop the resupply of russia and stop you know anything coming to britain type of thing so starve the island style the same time if you look over on the right hand side of the map this nice little maroon colored box the grinding war track this actually abstracts the army fronts and different army groups that Germany was dealing with on the eastern and western fronts. And so what this is, is as you're drawing from here, as you draw and you get an army, uh, you get a front or an army, oh, you know, here we go, Ukrainian front, it's going to go ahead and get placed over in this track. And as you're, and then what you're doing every turn is you're rolling against the numbers on here, six plus, you can see, and they're advancing up the this grinding war track. As they advance up the grinding war track, you start losing counters per turn. You get to draw. So you start with six, down to five, four, and then three. You also lose your transport points. So to move those pieces around costs transport points. You only get so many per turn you're going to roll. There's some you get automatically, and then you may get more based on how well you roll. Um, that's going to be reduced as turns go by. So I think that's a good overview. Um, let's go ahead, and we're going to jump into a game. I'm going to reset the board. 
We're going to play a couple turns, kind of see it in action, and then I'll follow it up with my final review thoughts. All right, we are ready to rock and roll. I have the game all set up, ready to go. Uh, I'm just going to dive right in here. So, game is played through the series of turns up here. You guys should be able to see everything. Um, if you can't see all the little details, uh, I understand. Can't really zoom in anymore without losing part of the map. So, try to explain as I go. All right, so my usual. Um, all right, so the first phase on the first turn and every turn is going to be the draw phase. So, you have your cup of chits I mentioned in my overview. Um, if you look over here at the grinding war track on the right, bottom right of the map, it tells you how many counters you draw. We have no enemies that have moved up at all because it's the very beginning of the game. So you start off on stable fronts, which means you get to draw six per turn to start with. So you go ahead, start drawing them. Draw a couple at a time here. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll kind of place them out here down in this counter allocation box they give you. Kind of place them out. We have an IGB command marker. Um, that's something that you get to use when you're for building or for removing uh, devastation markers. Now we have our resources as well. Another IGB command. Resources, we have a hull section it looks like. Internal hull uh, system and then another IGB, oh, three IGB command markers. All right, so save save those, hang on to those. So, And then one green one, which is a convoy, um, an allied convoy. So, now we go ahead and we sort them out here. Uh, we got them sorted. We go ahead and we place them um, in the appropriate place. So in this case, we have the hull sections the and the internal system, so the resources, would, would they go out first? They go to each of the lettered spaces, and I'd mentioned these are, this one has C, this one has a D on it, so you just find the different actual places on the map. So for instance, C is Grunberg, it goes there, and D is placed at Erfurt. Uh, each of the places is has a number, and then is also named. These are actual, you know, cities in Germany, obviously. Um, and the different, I have it all set up now, you actually start off with one resource in each of the letters. Um, to start off the game with. So you're, you're automatically gonna have some resources you need to go ahead and move around to begin with. All right, that is the draw phase. Um, then the allocation phase is where I start putting them out as I was doing. Um, the allocation phase continues. I'll go ahead, um, I put out the different resources during the allocation phase. You put out allied convoys, allied armies, which we didn't draw any, and anything else, any bomb, uh, bombing devastation markers will go ahead and the bombing devastation phase, which we did not draw any. Um, hopefully, well, hopefully not, but hopefully just to show you guys for learning purposes, we'll draw one next turn. So, all right, so we have an allied convoy here. You can see it has a, pl a five plus on it. That is important for later. Well, it may be important. Um, they first get placed in the Atlantic Ocean box down here. Now, what's going to happen later in the turn is we're going to get a chance to go after them. If we're able to sink them, fantastic. If not, they're going to end up moving up to the Western approaches here, which that um, trip from our Valentin U-boat shelter is a little more dangerous, a little more difficult. So we always want to try to get them in the Atlantic Ocean if we can. So, but I'll cover that when we get to the battle phase. All right, so that's finished up the allocation phase. Um, we'll skip the bombing devastation phase because we did not draw a bombing devastation marker, which would look like this. Next turn, we'll go ahead and, if we don't get one, I'll probably just fake draw one just so you can uh, show you guys how it works. Um, all right, now we go on to the movement phase. These are, we're rolling for transportation points to move our different systems, our different sections, crews, hulls, whatever, and move them to the shipyards to try to get our U-boats built. So for the, you start off, go ahead and check that grinding war track in the bottom right again. Transport points, 1D6 plus six. Let's make sure we get our right die. Gotta give us the blue ones for the Germans here. Um, 1D6 plus six, you just go ahead and roll. So you're, you're always gonna have, so to start off, you're always gonna have six plus, well, Okay, one. So we rolled the worst. So the worst case scenario we have, we have seven points to start this turn. We could have a, could have up to twelve. Just shows the you know the chaos of war, chaos of real life. How well the transportation transportation system is going to work. As we all know, if you've ever taken bus, train, even roadways, you know you never know how things are going to get moved around, how easily you're going to be able to move around, how long it's going to take, or how short it's going to take. So this kind of represented a little bit with the rolls. Not to mention, obviously the war effort against Germany. So we rolled that. Um, so we had 1d6, which rolled a one plus six. We have seven um, transport points. So we have our track up here in our marker on the IGD available transport points. We can go ahead and move it up to seven if you want. Um, I spend them pretty quick, so I don't always use the marker, but it is there if you want to keep track of it that way. So we have seven points. The way the rules are work as, in, as the base rules. And I'll cover some of the optional rules in my final review, final thoughts. But as the base rules are, 
you can move, you spend one point to move any piece, one spot, and then that's it. It can't, it can only move one space per turn. So looking at it now, obviously we want to try to get the necessary components together in one shipyard, right? That's our goal to start with and in, in general. So we know that we can look over and we can see easily the type 21A submarine takes two of the squares, two of the diamonds, two of the circles, which would be two hull sections, two internal systems, and two of the train crews. So we're going to try to look around and we're going to try to get them all, like I said, to the same shipyard. Keeping in mind that obviously you have a couple different shipyards that can build them. You actually have three. Although, if you look at the spaces, for instance, Hamburg has eight spaces. Bremen has six. Uh, Danzig only has four. Which, because the first couple submarines you try to, try to build take either six or five, you actually can't start and build them at Danzig. You have to build them at Bremen or Hamburg. And then as production opens up, as you get more advanced models that take less resources, starting with the um, Type C, 21C, then bam, you can start using Danzig. So just keep that in mind. It's a subtle little strategy uh, aspect that I didn't, didn't, did not necessarily realize the first time I played and kind of got, oh, I'd put a bunch of resources over here and I said, wait, I can't even use that. So keep that in mind. A little tip for you guys. So, all right. We got all of our guys. We got our seven points. Let's go ahead and start moving our resources around. Um, what I like to do, I like to move them and then I just rotate them just for me, just to remember. And then at the end of the movement, I'll, I'll move it back. So let's move this train crew up here. That's one hull section here, two internal system, three, another internal system, four, uh, this whole section, five, train crew, six, and one more. So we know we have two, we have a hull section, hull section, two internals, and two crews. So they're headed that way. Not there yet, though. And that can come into effect later when you get start getting your areas bombed and devastated and then they get destroyed. For now, they're headed that way. Um, and I had one more point because I used six to move these guys, right? Yep. So I have one more point left. So what I'm going to do, I'll start sending, I'll send this internal system up to B here. And it can move anywhere. There's not limited to, you know, oh, this E is only, has to, has to go straight to a... Um, open space or you know like a uh, non-production city it can go to it can go to another spot here like this so all right that is seven so that's seven points i spent so that's all my movement all the transportation i'm able to do this turn all right that was a movement phase we'll go to the construction phase now we're going to skip it because we're not constructing anything that would be if you had enough resources to build a submarine in any of the shipyards and you have one of these igb command markers available you can go ahead you can build a flotilla of subs you would place everything in the scrap pile here. You would grab um, the flotilla marker and go ahead and place it in the Valentin U-boat shelter, which would be available in the next phase, which we will now go to, which is the battle phase. Um, so like I said, even though the, the core of the game, right, is constructing U-boats, I love the fact that, a uh, little secret, little secret pre-review review, I love the fact they included a battle aspect and trying to sink the convoys. It's not just the construction of the U-boats, right? I mean, not to say that wouldn't be fun as a game, but I like the fact that they do include a little bit of the actual war itself, right? The actual uh, combat part of it. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're in the battle phase. Um, you have any a full-strength flotilla in the U-boat mission track here. Um, you can go ahead and try to send them to sink convoys. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we have that convoy that we drew earlier. It's in the Atlantic Ocean right now, so we can go ahead and use the Atlantic Ocean track here. Let's go ahead and grab one of our... Um, type 7 flotilla markers. We're going to send him into the open ocean. All right. Um, sorry, a little editing snafu there. Um, so hopefully everything's making sense here. So we're going on our uh, the battle phase. We're sending our U-boat flotilla, the Type 7 here. We're sending him into the open ocean um, to fight. He has to go ahead and pass these boxes, which are basically just a series of challenges, to get to the convoy here at the end to destroy him. So... You look at his stats, so right now he's in the open ocean box. You look at them different stats he has. He has all twos, the type uh, seven has all twos. Two engine, two silence, two attack, and then two defense, the big number there. Um, depending on what box he's in, he has different challenges he has to pass. In this one, for instance, there's the symbol for an engine, it's a big propeller. So he has to pass, uh, he has to roll against his engine, which he has a two, which means he has to roll two dice. And then the, there's a die next to it, it says four plus. So he has to roll at least a four higher with one of the dice to pass that challenge. If he passes, he moves on to the next box. Yay, and then he gets another challenge to do. If he fails, he suffers a depth charge attack, which they will then roll against our defense to 
being a type 7 only have two for defense which means they don't have to roll a two or higher to damage us yeah not good odds if we're under attack so uh, so what we really need to do is just basically pass all the um, challenges so let's go ahead and give it a roll again that's we have a two for engines we go ahead and roll against that get it we want a four or higher with at least one we got a four so we pass the open ocean so we get to go ahead and move into the pby searchers box now we're going to gonna roll again this time it's also engine but now it's a five plus with at least one of the dice so again two five plus five plus five plus uh we fail all right so we fail which means they spotted us so now they're going to depth charge us so there is one depth charge symbol so they get to roll one die and they're going to look against our defense like i said so they just have to roll a two or higher so it's a, if it's a one we pass no no damage to us two or higher we're going to take a hit a six so we do get hit which means we flip the flotilla marker over to a depleted side back side is depleted now we have a choice we can either push our luck continue on and keep trying to pass through but then if we take another hit we're destroyed or we can say uh return to base we'll move down to this dangerous trip home box we have to pass that challenge and then we get to go back in the shelter i'm going to recommend tactically wise yeah it's, it makes much more sense to say okay you know we'll try again next turn let's go ahead and go down to the dangerous trip home box again though we see the propeller so we have to pass an engine check four plus so two dice four plus at least one of them we got a five so we're successful so we go ahead and successfully make it back home limp back home to the valentin u-boat shelter um depleted and near the end of the turn here he'll actually be repaired so thankfully we didn't lose him it's always better because you cannot rebuild them so it's probably better or i would say it's generally better to bring them back depleted than just let them get destroyed if you can help it so now we do have one type seven flotilla left so let's go ahead and send him against that convoy we're not done yet send him into the open ocean let's go ahead and do our check against the engine obviously they all have the same stats so type two two um four plus we can roll a five and a four so he's past the open ocean now we go to pby searchers test the engine with a five plus boom we got a five so we go ahead and pass through pby searchers scout bombers now we have to pass them this one is against silence and it's four plus so we have to test our silence which we have two just like everything else two dice Boom, a four and a six. We pass the scout bombers. We successfully move on to the destroyer screen here. Now we have to pass silence with a five plus. We really want to get through this one because we are, otherwise we'll be depth charged twice. Okay, we fail. So, highest was a four. We need at least a five. So we do fail the um, the challenge here, the test. So the destroyer, destroyers spot us. So they drop two depth charges. You can see here there's only one depth charge symbol. Here there's two depth charges. So they're going to go ahead and drop two of them on us. So they get to roll two dice, and they're rolling against our defense, which is a type 7. Our defense is only two, so yeah, as long as they roll a two or higher with one of these, we're going to take a hit, and they're probably going to do it. All right, so one and six. So we do take one depth charge successful, so we do take a hit, so we're flipped over to our depleted side. Now, the nice thing for us is that regardless of the number of hits, that number of depth charges that hit, so even if it's been, you know, six and a five that's two hits you still only take one hit per challenge per test here so you can't get your full flotilla can't get blown out of the water with two unlucky rolls um it would just be no matter what one or two hits depleted so kind of a nice thing now based on this um looking at what we want to do i say we probably want to retreat back home we do not want to be de um, destroyed just like i kind of did with the other one yeah we're going to turn tail and run away so let's go ahead and move down to the dangerous trip home box Test the engine again with a four plus. All right, five and four, so we do pass. So we'll go ahead and retreat back to the Valentin U-boat shelter. And that is it for the battle phase. Um, if we were successful, we made it all the way to the end. We could attack the convoy using our attack, which is two, of course, so two dice. And you roll against the number on the convoy, which is a, this particular convoy is a five plus. So as long as one of the dice hit a five plus, you get to sink the convoy, it would go up to the scrap pile up here. So, all right, that's the battle phase. Now let's do the uh, grinding war phase. You go ahead and check the grinding war track over here. You look to see if there are any enemy armies, which would have been placed back in the allocation phase. There are no enemy or allied armies here, so we can basically skip the grinding war phase. Go to the repair phase. First off, you flip any of the depleted U-boat flotillas. You flip them over to the um, strong side here. 
full strength side, I guess they call it. So now we have both of our flotillas are full strength. Then you can remove a bombing devastation marker using either that type of resource that matches the, the symbol, which I'll show you guys later, or if it is, if you have the IGB command marker. Now we haven't didn't get any bombs uh, this turn, so we don't have to worry about that at all. Now we go to the end phase. You go ahead and move all convoys that are in the Atlantic Ocean to the western approaches. So he goes ahead and moves up here, which that is a bummer for us because, I mean, I don't know if you can tell from the camera where it is, but the path here to the western approaches is more difficult than the path here to the Atlantic Ocean. So the Type 7s, as hard as it is here in the Atlantic, it's really hard for the western approaches. So um, now what you do is you go ahead and you have to add on a counter to the turn track basically represent there's no turn marker instead what you're doing is you're putting resources um, or counters up there now you look you pull from a scrap pile if there is nothing in the scrap pile which there isn't right now um, you go ahead and remove one counter of your choice from the map to use as a turn marker um, so obviously you hope you have something to scrap pile to use because now we actually have to pull one of our resources off the map here unfortunately oh, they shoot at zero um, so I'm gonna say here we have an extra hull section. We have two right here. Let's go ahead and take one of those hull sections and move it into the scrap pile there. And then, move it to the turn marker. Yeah, I don't know why I said put it in the scrap pile. I'll put it on the turn uh, turn track here is what I meant to say. Okay, uh, we checked the victory conditions. If this was June, turn 16, June of 1944. Uh, however, we are only going into April of 1943, so no worries there. Let's go ahead and start the next turn. I'll run through another turn before I give my final thoughts. Um, draw phase. So again, we have our cup. Go ahead and check the grinding war track. Um, right now we're still at the stable fronts, six per turn. Let's go ahead and draw a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, let's go ahead and check to see what they are. It looks like there's gonna be an army front, a convoy, not good for us, IGB command, a Resource, hull section, a train crew, and a devastation marker. Perfect. I was hoping we draw at least those so I could show them off. I was going to just go ahead and pick them out if we hadn't drawn them, but we did. So, um, all right, so we got everything good here. Let's go ahead and go to the allocation phase, which we go ahead and look at our resources, which train crews G. Let's place him wherever the G spot is. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I'm going to get my video deleted now for saying that. Um, all right, now we go look for B. Where's B at? Right there. Sometimes you can, I'll set them to the side just so I can see the letters, but no big deal. All right. Um, let's go ahead and let's see. Place out the convoy. So convoys always start off in the Atlantic Ocean. Remember, we go ahead and check fronts, army fronts, or uh, armies in general, and you place them on the grinding war track. So we have a Leningrad front that we pulled. Go ahead and place it in the enemy start box right here. Now we go to the bombing devastation phase, which then this is where we would use the devastation marker here. So basically this just shows the bombing is being done, right? This abstractly represents the bombing of Germany itself that the Allies conducted during World War II. So you roll three, uh, three, six, and if you remember, or if you can see on the map, there's different numbers. It's gonna hit randomly, it's gonna hit somewhere. And if it rolls somewhere where there's already a marker, you just re-roll until you find one that doesn't have one. Go ahead and roll. So we have five, six, seven, eight, nine, a total of nine. Uh, so we look for place nine, which is Hanover. Boom, Hanover just got bombed and devastated. What that means is if there had been any resources there, they would be put in the scrap pile. At the same time, you cannot move resources through Hanover until that damage is repaired. All right, go on to the movement phase. Check our uh, grinding war track over here. Transport points, 1d6 plus six still. So we'll roll. All right, six plus five, so we get 11. Go ahead and move our marker up to 11. All right, let's go ahead and move. Let's start moving. C1, and he moved into Bremen here. So you go ahead and get to move him into the shipyard automatically. Let's do one, let's do two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, um, then ten. 
Okay. So we didn't have 11, 11 things to move anyway because it rolled really well. Usually what happens is, especially as the armies move up and you, you get less transport points per turn, you start not being able to move all your resources in the same turn, which is a bummer because when you can only move one turn at a time, you need certain ones, it's going to take forever. So then moving back, I'm right set up. Again, I just turn them sideways just to, so I don't forget if I move them or not. So, all right, that is it for the movement phase. Now we go on to the construction phase. We don't have enough resources to construct anything. Again, it'd be very simple. If we had the necessary resources, we construct, we put the IGB command marker there, and we go ahead and grab a flotilla marker and put it in our U-boat shelter here. So go ahead and skip that. We'll go on to the battle phase. Um, we definitely want to go ahead and try to launch a battle. Let's go ahead and do another one. So we're going to send that Type 7 back into the open ocean to pass that. Remember, two propeller is two engines. We have to go ahead and roll two, two dice, get a four plus at least one of them. So five, so we successfully test his engines. Now he moves into the PBY searchers. Again, he has to roll against his engines, test his engines with a five plus. Uh, he fails, so now he's going to get depth charge once. Roll against the depth charge against our defense. A five, so that is a failure, so we are depleted. So let's go ahead and try to return home, do a dangerous trip home. We roll um, test against our engines again with a four plus. And we fail, which means we are destroyed, which means this U-boat flotilla marker is placed in the scrap pile and it can never be rebuilt. Uh, at least according to the base rules. So, all right, that's the battle phase. I'm not going to do the last one here because I think you guys get a good idea how the battle works. Um, we go ahead and go on to the grinding war phase. Now, here's where, now that we have an arm, army marker here, the Leningrad front, it has a six plus on it. What that means is you go ahead and the number of markers there are. So right now there's only one. We roll a one d six. If he rolls a six or well six or higher, if he rolls a six, he's going to move up and then you're going to start using the next section above it for both the transport points and for the counter draws that represents the diminishing resources that germany had so we start off down here let's go ahead and roll it a four no big deal right he stays there that's not a big deal you say right well imagine multiple turns later imagine you had you have two of them and you maybe you have three of them here now you go ahead and you roll the 3d6 because one two three for every one of them you roll a three I roll a roll of die. Boom. Now, you only need one six. The other extra sixes don't count. So it's basically as long as you get one six, the allies are going to advance. They're going to move up. So instead of being at the stable front, maybe they'd be at you'd be at enemy advances. Now you only get to draw five counters per turn instead of six, and one d6 plus five transport points instead of one d6 plus six. So you can see where as time goes by, five per turn, four per turn, th three per turn, it really is going to hurt you how many counters you're putting on the map um, and then how many how many pieces of re your resources to build the subs you're actually going to be able to move around the map each turn. So, All right, that was the grinding war phase. Um, go on to the repair phase. We have nothing to repair uh, for U-boats. What we can do, remember we have that devastated marker, um, devastation marker in Hanover. We do one of two things. Um, we can remove a resource with the same icon as the marker so this one has a circle on it underneath the text it has a circle so you can remove any of the train crews you can say all right we're going to sacrifice these train crews to remove it or if you look down in our counter allocation box we have our igb command markers we have four of them right now so i'm going to say yeah we would want to go ahead throw it in the scrap pile and then take that devastation marker and throw it in the scrap pile as well um now go to the end phase that convoy we did not successfully defeat it moves into western approaches the one that was in western approaches already it just stays there they any every convoy that moves they stay in western approaches for the rest of the game or until they're sunk which for the most part means they're gonna just stay here because you're probably not gonna sink a whole lot of them never know all right now you do the whole take one counter from your choice from the scrap pile place on the turn track so i'm gonna say all right we'll get rid of this devastation one just place it on the turn track just to represent that's why it's always nice to have counters in the scrap pile, so that way you're not sitting there trying to having to pull your your resources you want you want to use off the actual map itself. So um, now you would check the victory conditions and start over and start a new turn. So that I think is a pretty good overview tutorial of the game. Let's go ahead and go on to uh, my review and my final thoughts. All right, now what do I think about this game? I really like it. Um, this is a really fun one. Clearly, you guys can probably tell from when I talk about the game and everything that I liked it. 
but I really do. So there's a lot of good things, um, very little bad. So kind of talk about the things I'm not a huge fan of to start with. Um, to start with, the way it works with luck is it feels extremely lucky. It feels like there's not, and there's not, and the downside of that, and hey, I'm all about dice rolling. You know, my games roll lots of dice. I have lots of fun with it. I wish there was maybe a little bit more ways to mitigate the luck. So when you're talking about, say, your U-boats, you're sending them, and, you know, you're going to roll, you're rolling against all these numbers, odds are they're getting depleted, and there's a good chance to get destroyed. Well, there's really no way to mitigate that luck. You know what I mean? There's not like, well, every one of your counters, maybe you, have a, you get to draw um, an emergency dive counter, right? You get to hang on to that. And so what happens is if you have your U-boat and he's going to get depth charged, because he fails, you know, he fails to pass the test of silent here it's against the scout bomber. He's going to get depth charged. You could use your crash dive counter, and he makes it out of that and makes it to the next box automatically. Maybe something like that, right? Just to kind of mitigate some of the luck of that. Um, tying into the luck of the dice rolling. The same thing with the transportation points, right? I get that having variable points. I do like it, but sometimes it can be feel interesting. Um, my first game, you know, rolling the 1d6 plus 6, I literally rolled like a 1 and a 2 like one or two, one, two, one. I roll it multiple times. Bad luck, right? And that happens. Maybe the next game I'll roll higher. But there's certainly an aspect of, eh, it's just, you know, sometimes it's unfortunate. It feels unfortunate if you roll multiple dice rolls in a way, um, in a row, excuse me. So um, as for the rest, that's, that's kind of it for uh, downsides. That's, that's it. Well, you know, it relies on a lot of dice rolling. I think you counter that a lot with solitaire games, though. So I can't say this unique to this game that dice rolling is, you know, a heavy aspect and i like dice rolling uh maybe some more mitigation to it would be nice maybe so anyway that said let's get into the good stuff good stuff is damn near everything else so love the topic love the fact that you are constructing u-boats and not just captaining them captaining captaining trying to pronounce it right here uh, captaining them in the Atlantic Ocean, right? You are actually constructing them. That's the core of the game. At the same time, I love the fact that they put in there that you actually do get to do some combat, right? You could send your flotillas, luck aspect aside. It is a lot of fun to kind of call it a push your luck style, right? Where you're pushing your luck, making it through these boxes. Oh, I'm going to test my engines, test my engines. Oh, test silence. And you're getting there and getting there. And oh, maybe you get depth charged. Maybe you survive it. Maybe take a hit and you're depleted. Well, you might say, you know what? I'm going to risk it anyway because I really want to sink a convoy. Probably not worth the risk, but you may decide it is. In which case, you get to push your luck, you know, move them on and go ahead and keep testing. And hopefully, for you, anyway, hopefully sink a convoy. So really like that aspect. I love the fact that and then you didn't get to see it in this game because I just did the first couple turns. But as a game develops and you build those submarines and you start getting type 21s and you get more advanced ones, you put the counters here, boom, boom. And I don't think I mentioned this before. The ones you have deployed already upgrade automatically. So the next thing you know, all, let's say you had built three of them here, all your type 21s are now the type 21C. And so instead of those weak little Type 7s with 2s for everything, a Type 21C has 3 engine, 4 silence, 4 attack, and 5 defense. That is light years beyond the Type 7s. Now, you're not going to have enough. You're never going to feel like you have enough. And even as you start getting them, I mean, the rest of the map, you're going to start having devastation markers on it. You're, you're going to have the armies are advancing down the grinding war tracks. You're losing, losing land, losing resources. All those things that impact you, so you're never going to really feel like, oh, I got all this extra, you know, this awesome Navy. It's always going to feel like you're getting strangled somewhere else. Um, speaking of which, I also like the fact that he included things like the grinding war track to, to abstract um, the different aspects of the war, the ground war, um, the parts that influenced it, along with the devastation markers. As simple as that is to have that pop up and you roll a 3D6 and place it wherever, just to represent, you know, really abstract, really easy to play. Um, show you those different aspects and that's probably my overall thoughts in the game are that it is super simple to play and you guys saw that and i think you probably got a pretty good idea how to play even just from this you're still going to read the rule book you know catch the the little things and i may have made a real mistake here or there but that's the core of the game it's easy but it plays super quick so anytime i see a game where it has a turn track that goes you know 16 turns 24 turns i always get a little nervous okay how long are these cheese turns going to take well, with me describing it, yeah, it took a little bit. 
But when you're just playing and you're just moving counters and you're rolling, you know, you draw, you allocate, you roll for a couple things, you're moving some stuff, do a little battle, and then you move on, you roll a couple more, this and that, flip some things around, you're done. That's a turn. I mean, you can fly through a turn in no time. So you can fly through a game in no time. Um, is it a 20-minute game, a 30-minute game? No, probably a little longer than that. But if it went much longer than an hour, probably means you either did something wrong or maybe did something right because you made it to the very end and like you were just like, I'm just going to the end. So, all right. Game de design itself, very solid, very quick, very easy to play. Love some of the little things, um, the different shapes verse and letters combined. So it's not just, hey, train crews, hull sections, um, and internal systems. It's actually also the symbol on here. Keeps track of the symbol for accessibility reasons, too. That would help people um, if someone maybe struggled with understanding some of the words around here. If they weren't an English speaker, they could still play based on the symbols, at least that aspect. Um, with all the symbology is very good, which got to give credit. And that's part of the give credit to uh, Mark Mahaffey, I believe I pronounced it right this time. Mahaffey, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, did a great job on this map. Great job on this board. Uh, my only one complaint, and I forgot about this for my, that was one of my, uh, one of my cons is that I don't know why there's not a sequence of play on the map. There's clearly room. I mean, you have the a huge block here where it's, and if you see my left, bottom left here, huge block where it says, you know, 21, the Naval Wonder Weapon, 1943, 1945, and then it has the stuff. Cool. Yeah, I'm not saying you shouldn't have that somewhere, but maybe put sequence of play right there and instead shift this up here, make it a little smaller, shift that over there, make it smaller, fit it in between, whatever the case may be. I, I'm not a graphics artist. I can't design any of this stuff, but it would be real nice to have a sequence of play, especially as a solitaire game and especially as a rather simple one that once you're comfortable with the rules, you don't need to refer to the rule book a whole lot. You really don't. And so that type of game, I love when the sequence of play is on the map somewhere because then you're literally, once you know the game, man, you're playing it, you're even using that sequence of play, you're barely cracking that rule book anymore. So one little complaint, it would have been nice to have it on the map. Um, but other than that, like small sort of, uh, you know, usability thing, the map itself looks great. Everything's clear, stands out. Really love these boxes down here. This looks really cool. Um, the grinding war track, the bottle development track. U-boat mission track, all this just looks really cool. Looks great. The symbology is great with the depth charges, engine, you know, propeller, the sonar represents silence. Very cool stuff. So great job there. Mark Mahaffey or Mahaffey, Mahaffey. What is, oh, now it's I lost uh, how to pronounce his last name. So Mahaffey, Mahaffey, Mahaffey. <laughs> Go ahead. Let me know guys. Last time I uh, had a video um, for, uh, I think it was Operation Ichigo. Yeah. Um, couple, I think a couple of the, uh, against the odds people were like hey his name is pronounced this way and I was like okay and then I said I swore I would get it right this time apparently not anyway um, one more thing before I dive into my absolute final thoughts uh, I think I already can't tell I like the game is I love the fact that there are a bunch of optional rules as well not only optional rules but optional counters so even if you look at it you go well it seems kind of simple and it is it is a simple game I'm not gonna lie it's a simple game but there's also, da -da, grab some of these counters. You also have counters. Oh, what are these? Anti-aircraft counters, priority transport counters. Well, additional convoy, additional type seven. There are a ton of different optional rules. Um, some are historically based, which generally make the game harder for the German player, which I don't necessarily recommend because I think the game is very hard as is. But if you want it more historically, even more historically accurate, and you just want that ultimate challenge, you can throw those rules in there. Um, things like different start times, different being damaged already on the map, things like that. Um, you also have, as I saw the counters, you have rules where you could say, you know what, I think the Germans have access to anti-aircraft guns where they can focus them. I'm mean, going to have them placed in certain areas so that you roll against, you know, those bombing devastation attacks. So it's because I had a game where I had Bremen almost filled with um, ready to make a ship and Bremen got bombed. So I lost all that. All those markers went into the scrap pile. So all a ton of optional rules. I think some favor the Allies. There's a bunch that favor the Germans. I'm talking like a page and a half optional rules. Really cool to have that. I think it's really nice in a, in a solitaire game. I'm not always a big fan of optional rules in multiplayer games. I think it just kind of divides the user base. But for a solitaire game, love having options because mix up your game. Increases that replayability because odds are you're going to play a solitaire game over and over again. Absolutely final thoughts. Clearly I love the game. A lot of fun with it. Great topic. Great graphical design. Design is tight. Um, plays very well, very quickly. 
Um, this feels like this game could stand on its own. I know it's part of this really cool four pack again from uh, the Sea Monsters quad here. But really, this game could stand on its own. It could be its own, you know, Ziploc release. I mean, it's, it's half a counter sheet, if that. Um, and the one, you know, medium map, medium sized map here. So definitely recommend you check it out if the topic interests you. If this overview, review, tutorial interests you, check out the game. I mean, I haven't even looked at the other games yet. I'm already feeling like this would probably be worth picking up anyway. So hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment below. Let me know what you think. Um, hopefully I dig in, I'll dig into uh, a couple more of the games that come with this uh, Sea Monsters annual. Other than that, this has been Type 21, Naval Wonder Weapon, 1943-1945. Till next time, guys. Later.